The information presented in this podcast is intended for entertainment purposes only. The views and opinions expressed by the host are based on personal experiences, research, and perspectives. We do not endorse any products, services, individuals, or organizations mentioned in this podcast unless explicitly stated. Welcome to Tales from South Florida. I'm your host, Bill Monty. Now, in past episodes, we have looked at very specific places and people, events to talk about and to recall. The other day, someone asked me, why this podcast? Why this subject? It's very easy. I noticed, like you all have, and perhaps this is how you found this podcast, that it In social media, and specifically Facebook, there's the I Grew Up In Facebook group or Facebook page. So I grew up in Sunny Isles. I grew up in Hollywood. I grew up in Broward County. And this is where, no matter where you live in the country, and maybe even the world, you go in and you or other people post a picture or a memory of someplace that was important to them years ago. Might be a shopping mall, might be a store, might be an amusement park, whatever it might be. And then people comment on it. Sometimes they would post their own pictures. Sometimes the comments they would leave would be a couple of words, a sentence, maybe a couple of sentences, and maybe it would be a paragraph. What I wanted to do with this podcast was to make it an audio version of I Grew Up In Fill in the Blank, and I hope that you're enjoying the journey and our talks down memory lane as we talk about and remember the places that made South Florida a great place to grow up and a great place to currently live in. The other day, I heard a song from the Beatles album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and instantly was taken back to a time as a child. My brother and I were in the backyard laying in lounge chairs, getting some sun, I imagine. It was a beautiful South Florida day. We didn't have a huge backyard, but we were surrounded by a grapefruit tree, orange tree, lemon tree, kumquat tree, because back then, that's what people had in their backyards. You know, before the canker disease came in, we all had those citrus trees. And the song was playing. We, we had the cassette player out there, that little handheld cassette player we used to carry around everywhere. And Sgt. Peppers was on. It was brand new. I remember my brother and I thought, for some reason, the Beatles had changed their name from the Beatles to Sgt. Peppers' Lonely Hearts Club Band. And wasn't that a strange thing to do? <laughs> Isn't sense memory strange? Because instantly on hearing that song, which I've heard many times, I went back to that particular day that time I could feel the sun shining down on me you know you walk into a store and sometimes there's that smell that takes you back I remember Rexall drugs used to have that every Rexall drug I've ever went to in my life had exactly the same smell when you walked in perhaps it's the smell of bacon cooking that takes you back to a breakfast when you were growing up and your mother or father preparing a breakfast meal it's a song it's a sound it's a sight It all comes back. So that's what I want this episode to be about. The nostalgia of growing up in South Florida. And I want you to stick with me, please, through to the end, because I need your help to complete this episode. So this is the tale of growing up in South Florida. Growing up, for me as a child, it was the late 60s, mid to late 60s. And it's in there I find ingrained some of the most specific memories I have of that time. Kind of like the show The Wonder Years. Remember that show? I had a friend, third or fourth grade, I can't recall. His name was Roland. He lived a couple of blocks over from us. And Roland would come and sleep at our house, and I'd go sleep, have sleepovers at his house. And usually at his house, when we did it, his father would set up a pup tent in the backyard. We'd get our sleeping bags out. We all had sleeping bags back then. Wasn't that strange? We'd sleep out in the backyard, you know? It was a, it was a great adventure. We were camping, right? And the next morning, we'd get up. Uh, Roland's mother would would fix us breakfast and around seven o'clock we'd gather up our bicycles and our fishing gear fishing poles and tackle and we would head off now these were the days when you could just leave seven o'clock in the morning and no one really expected to see you again until about five o'clock unless something went wrong if you didn't show up at five o'clock for supper that's when your parents started worrying we'd head off on Johnson Street going west to University Drive plop ourselves down at the canal there and we'd start fishing for a couple of hours. Of course, Roland's mom or my mom would have prepared some sandwiches for us and some snacks so we wouldn't starve out there. But that's how we could spend our mornings. 
And we'd catch some fish. Maybe we'd take them back to clean them. Maybe we'd just toss them all back. And then we'd get back on our bikes and, and head back to our home area, head over to Perry Airport, right off of Hollywood Boulevard there, sit and watch the planes land and take off to with their signs on the back that they'd go flying over, advertising businesses, and we'd, maybe we'd head over to the baseball field at the same area by Perry Airport, see if someone was playing softball that we could get in on a game. We probably did have our baseball gloves with us just in case. If that didn't happen, perhaps we'd get a little antsy. We'd ride our bikes over to the Taft Street Shopping Center. There was a royal castle there. So if we had any money on us, maybe we'd pick up a couple of burgers and some birch beer. Uh, royal castle burgers and birch beer. Those were the days. But then that shopping center, too, was Walgreens and Woolworth. And both of those had lunch counters. And at Woolworth, I remember, there used to be those balloons, and you could pop a balloon to see if you could win that one-cent banana split. And maybe we had enough money between us to afford the full-price banana split, which I think was about 82 cents or something like that. We'd take a chance on that. Or maybe we'd go wander around Jackson Byron's. G.C. Murphy was another store that was there. Ah, those were good times. On the weekends that we didn't spend... Running around town, sometimes my father would announce we were headed for the Everglades, Everglades National Park to be specific. Normally this was when relatives came to town. There were only a couple of places that we would go. The beach was one of them. Everglades National Park was the other. I'll talk about the other a little bit later on. So we'd gather up the car, head out again early in the morning, and we'd stop along the way, sometimes before we got to the park and sometimes after, at the U Picket Fields out in Homestead in Florida City. Anyone else do that? Anyone else, that's where you went and you pick the, the snap beans, the green beans, the strawberries, and you take them all home. We take those strawberries home. I remember my father would bring out the ice cream machine. He'd head over to Quick Check. That's what we used to call Winn-Dixie back in the day, kids. It used to be called Quick Check. And he'd get some rock salt, but he would make fresh strawberry ice cream. My mom would cook up those green beans. Anyway, back to Everglades National Park. We'd head in, I remember specifically two places, I'm not sure what was in between. I think one was the first place you could stop, and one was the last place you could stop down there. The Gumbo Limbo Trail was the first one. That was, I always thought, the most exciting one. It had a nice little trail. It ended at this big lake, I think. That was the one where that was. I remember one time my father's Aunt Ira was visiting us with her husband, Tommy, and we saw an alligator in the lake, so it was starting to come closer and closer to shore. And my father said, well, it's time to pack up. So we got our picnic lunches and we closed everything up and I went to the car. And there's Ira down, <laughs> down at the shore of the lake trying to get the alligator to come to shore so she could give it a chicken leg. And my father finally had to go pull her away and explain that uh, if that alligator did come to shore, things weren't going to end well. The other place I remember in Everglades National Park was going down was, uh, was Gulf Flamingo. And I don't remember ever going to a time where we could actually get out of the car because mosquitoes, no matter what time of year you went, were so thick. But there was some kind of restaurant and some kind of hotel and, I guess, campgrounds. We'd always see other cars there, but we didn't see anyone else walking around. And I just remember we'd start to get out, the mosquitoes would come in, we'd close the door, and we'd spend the rest of the trip going home slapping those mosquitoes. And back in those days, you didn't take the turnpike to get down there. You could only take the Tamiami Trail or 27. On the way back or on the way coming home, we might stop at Andy Town out there on 27. I think it was 27 in Griffin. Andy Town was a little tiny store. <laughs> and I think a couple of, maybe a hotel or something like that. We always stopped to either grab a sandwich or maybe some worms to go fishing. Yeah, Andy Town. Hadn't thought of that in a long time. The other place we'd go would be at night when we'd get into the car and head down towards Miami Beach. Driving down, as Jimmy Buffett said, driving down the avenue that's known as A1A. Because we'd go see all the grand hotels. Of them all, I remember the castaways. I always looked so magical. We never went in. We would park across the street, and we'd get out, and the relatives would take pictures. And there were houseboats lined all along the water. I don't think they have those houseboats anymore. But back then, there were houseboats everywhere. Go down to the Fountain Blue, the Eden Rock. You know, these were famous places. The Diplomat, the original Diplomat Hotel. You know, it was kind of like a mini Vegas or even New York back then. You had stars like uh, Frank Sinatra and Judy Garland and Sammy Davis Jr. And 
you know, all the great musical stars of their time were coming and performing in these hotels. And they were grand. And it was a beautiful time to be living and growing up in South Florida. That was how we entertained people. The only other place we'd go would be the beach. Our beach for our family was always Dania Beach. There might have been other beaches. I wouldn't know about them. <laughs> Dania Beach with the pier was the one we went to. They had a little restaurant at the foot of the pier, I remember, served hamburgers. By the time we got them back to the blankets, they were all sandy. But I do remember them being some great hamburgers. And that one time there was a, a Dania Beach. Anyone else remember this? I seem to be the only person who remembers this. I wonder if I hallucinated it sometimes. There was a giant metal slide, you know, the kind that had three or four rows where people could come down. You sat on a burlap sack and you would ride down. And, and on the hot days, you did not want to come off that burlap sack because my brother did one time and the scars and the burns on his arms and chest and back were just horrific for a while. If we were lucky, also sometimes we'd get down to Key Largo. I never understood Key Largo as a child because when I went to the beach, I wanted to be able to body surf in the waves. And if you've ever been to Penny Camp Park or down to the, the water in the Keys, you're not body surfing anything. Little tiny trickles of waves. It wasn't until I was much older that I got to really enjoy and love the Florida Keys. What are your memories of growing up around that time? If you grew up in the late 60s and early 70s, do you remember the places I'm talking about? Do you remember that drive along Hotel Row along A1A? The castaways, what were some of the other hotels? I can't remember now. So you can see, I don't have a great memory about some of the stuff, and that's why I need your help. So stay tuned, and I can tell you how you could become part of the show. Cool, huh? Hi, this is Bill Monty, and I am inviting you to join me on babyboomer.org. Babyboomer.org. It's for baby boomers and a little bit younger and maybe a little bit older. The one stop shop website. It gives you everything Baby Boomer. If you're looking for books to read, interviews, podcasts like this one, and Bill Monty's Guide for Getting Older, just about anything you want to do online, you can do at babyboomer.org. Babyboomer.org. Come join me over there. I'll be looking for you. The Castaways Hotel. Everglades National Park, the U Pickett Fields and Homestead in Florida City, Dania Beach, playing softball right off Pines Boulevard and 72nd Street in Hollywood, watching the planes take off from Perry Airport, fishing in the canals off of University Drive. Yeah, these are my memories of growing up down here. You know, when, when I started this podcast, the one thing I knew is that if the listeners weren't involved, it would never be complete. So I'm asking you, reach out. Tell me your memories, your stories of growing up in South Florida. Anything I say today resonate with you? Did you hear it and go, oh yeah, that was me. That was me growing up. Then contact me. Tell me your story. There's a couple of ways to do that. If you want to remain anonymous, that's fine. And if you don't want your voice recorded and on the show, that's fine too. You can email me at talesfromsouthflorida at gmail.com and I'll tell your story for you if that's what you'd like or that's what you'd prefer. Or email me your contact information and I'll reach out to you and get your story. And then if you don't want to tell it, we can tell it through an AI voice. Technology is wonderful these days. Or you can give me a call at 754-800-3170. Don't worry if you didn't write it down. It's in the show notes. You can capture it from there. But leave me a voicemail. I'm not going to answer the phone. It goes straight to voicemail. But just let me know your first name, if that's all you want, what town, what area you grew up in, and what your story or memory is. And if you want me to contact you, then leave your name and your contact information, and I'll reach out to you, either by calling you back or by email, if that's what you prefer. We want to hear your tales from South Florida. This is not just my podcast. This is your podcast. This is your audio Facebook group, and I hope that you'll join me as we journey down the roads of the memories that we have of growing up in this beautiful, wonderful place. And I hope that you'll remember to join me in the future for more Tales from South Florida. One last thing, remember, be kind whenever possible, because it is always possible. Take care of yourself, my friends, and I will see you the next time that we take another talk down memory lane.